Australia in the grip of the worst drought on record. Freak weather conditions have caused the most destructive bushfires in the nation's history. These fires have struck the towns of Dolby and Milmerin, destroying many homes and farm buildings. Firefighters are praying that the wind doesn't change, as this could cut the main highway to Brisbane. We remind you, a total fire ban is still in force throughout the city. wait until after the fire stopped. They're getting worse. Mum, I'll be all right. Besides, Barry's expecting me home this afternoon and I've got a few things to do before uni starts. All right, dear. Dad and I are really proud that you topped your class last year. Now, darling, this is your final year. Don't let that boyfriend of yours come between your study and your future. Mum. It's not that I don't like him, but he spends too much time in his music. Not everyone is as lucky as I am. He has to work his way through law. Well, I'm sure a little bit of home cooking won't interfere with his music. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Sorry I can't wait any longer for Dad. I'll phone. Be careful. Go that music! I love it! Jackie! Wear your hat, please! temperature today is in Cloncurry, where it has hit an incredible 53.1 degrees Celsius with no relief in sight. That's 127 degrees for all your old timers. You're listening to 4BD. The northbound Brisbane Road has been cut by fires due to wind change. Motorists are warned to proceed with caution. London reports heavy fighting with Nazi forces on the Fifth Army front.
Anvio, where Allied troops have captured two German strong points. Meanwhile, in the desert battle zone, there are signs that the German air resistance to Allied bombing is weakening. We will keep you informed as further news comes to hand. <laughs> Allies land at Anzio, February Arthur? Arthur Hatcher? G'day. I heard all about you in the prison camp. I'm George Slater, friend of your brother Joe. Now listen, Arthur. Don't be as stubborn as that stupid brother of yours. Now piss off. First in, first serve, mate. Joe told me all before he died. So shove off!
Where are you? I don't, I don't know. Sorry. Barry, I just had the most awful thing happen. You haven't wrecked your car. Are you alright? No, yes. Oh, I'm driving along. The car just stopped and I'll be sitting At first I thought it must have been an eclipse or something, but he murdered the soldier. Hang on. Hey, come on, guys, please. What are you talking about, Jackie? It's probably been the heat. I had a lot of sun. I had the hood down. It's really hot out here. Do you want me to come and get you? No, I'll be all right. I must have had some kind of hallucination. I thought I saw something. Don't worry. I'll be home. I'll be home in about... Jackie. Can you hear me? Jackie, are you all right? and the freak atmospheric conditions are likely to continue due to the devastating bushfires and dust storms caused by the high winds. Unfortunately, there's no sign of rain anywhere on the continent. And that's all we have from the weather desk tonight. We'll be back after these few words. Punching down the track with the sunshine on my back. Thanks very much. My jeans are jingling silver. Who was that? The Harrisville police. You rang the police? I had to do something. How many bodies did they find? They found no sign of recent digging. That's because there was no murder. And you know, even if there was, why get involved? It's got nothing to do with us. Barry, I did see something. A mirage. A mirage doesn't last an hour. The clock on the car dashboard turned to five past eleven when it started and went back to it at the end. Not one second passed. That's all very confusing. Even dreams take time. <laughs> but you'll have to sort it out for yourself. Landed Anzio. <laughs> Harrisville murder. George Slater was found murdered yesterday in the grounds of Frenchman's farm near Harrisville in southeast Queensland. The decapitated body had been shockingly mutilated after death, but at this stage the murder weapon had not been located. Are you all right, miss? <sighs> yes. Yes, I'll be all right. I'll get you a glass of water. Local farmer charged with murder. Mr. Arthur Hatcher, owner of Frenchman's Farm near Harrisville in southeast Queensland, was arrested today and charged with the murder of Private George Slater of the AIF. That's not him. I beg your pardon? He didn't do it. It was the other man. Oh, you wouldn't believe me anyway. What do you know? I haven't seen one of those since the war. Petrol was rationed and we had to use gas burners. <laughs> I saw those people yesterday. Oh, no, that's impossible. That photograph was taken 40 years ago.
Um, we don't seem to have anything ourselves. Can you check this address? We should get something. Oh, good. Okay. Thanks very much. Okay. Yes. Mainsbridge. This is the State Archives Office. We have a memorandum on our file asking us to advise your section if anyone should ask about the 1944 murder trial. Crown versus Hatcher. Memorandum from us. 1944. Does anyone know anything about Crown versus Hatcher? Yeah. Just hang on a minute, please. It's that bloody Bill Dolan case, the Frenchman's Farm murder. Who wants to know? Grenville. Miss J. Grenville. Well, if it isn't old Bill Dolan, what brings you to this place? Well, it's not you. And it's not all those machines out there. It just happens to be the coolest place in Australia. This is John Mainsbridge over here. He was transferred over to my section. I'm trying to teach him the only way to investigate. Because those machines of yours, they haven't proved a thing to me yet. How are you? OK, till he turned up. Don't let him get to you. His bark's worse than his bite. He's a hell of a cop. Oh, this is Penny. Hi. Hi. We had an inquiry about Frenchman's farm. That hasn't reared its ugly head again. Sorry about the pun. <laughs> it's the only case that gave us trouble when we set up the computers. Every time we fed the codes and information, it just wiped the tapes and then printed a lot of garbage. In this particular case, we do have a few problems. Joe, what's that reference number? Mm. Solved anything yet? All the shot. That's all that comes out. It just keeps repeating it. That's all? That's it. Finish. That's your lot. What's that smell? It happens every time the temperature drops. It smells sweet, like lavender or something. It smells like the adhesive for microchips. It smells like horseshit to me. May I? All the shot. 292-1984. It could be a telephone number. We checked every town in the country. There's no such number. And there's no town called Aldershot. What about Aldershot in Britain? You mean the big army base? We tried that too. It was a Chinese laundry. What was the name of the woman who made the inquiry today? Uh, Grenville. Put that near microchips. The clerk said she was a law student. Shit, it's gone berserk. Stupid bloody thing. It can't even spell. It doesn't seem to make any sense. Bloody thing's writing in French. There's lots of it. Does anyone speak French? Most guys around here can't speak English. I have that, please. Thank you. Come on, John. Thanks.
How was it? That was great. Thank you. This is from the exact same edition that I found on the army kit bag. And look, a man named Slater was murdered out near Harrisville in 1944. But you're talking about 1944. No. This is a photograph from the newspaper the next day. The car I told you about, those people, just as I described it. Do you want to know what I think? Even though you've had this holiday with your folks, there's still a lot of tension. It's unbelievable. It must be final year. All this pressure, it's all playing on your nerves. This is a report from the newspaper the next day. They never found the murder weapon, nor could they find a motive. The murderer's name was Arthur. This is a photograph of Arthur, but this is not the man that murdered the soldier. Jackie, don't confuse me anymore. You say you saw this guy chopped in half with a matic yesterday, but at the same time it's 1944, and now he didn't do it. And look at you, you get upset with me when I'm trying to be realistic and rational. Maybe this is some case you read about that has buried itself in your subconscious and the extreme heat has caused an apparition. An apparition, as you call it, doesn't commit murder. I saw it happen. And that apparition chased me and wanted to kill me. It seemed possessed. I'll never forget that mad look on his face. I don't know why it happened or how, but I witnessed a murder. That murder took place 15 years before you were born. Jackie, hang on. Listen, this time will stop. How strange things do happen to people who get too much sun. And Mark was telling me, he's got this book about black holes and stuff. He's writing it weird shit like that. And he was saying there are plenty of cases of people who are able to send themselves back in time. This is not science fiction. Well, what can I say? Look, I'm going to get back to you. Baby? What happened here? See? I didn't dream it. Solved any good murders lately? Well, I found out all about Slater's war record and how he was in the prison camp and everything. And guess who was in the same camp? Who? Joe Hatcher, the brother of the man charged with the murder. He died of cholera at the end of 1943, just before Slater got out. It's all there. That's him. So that's Slater? Yep. Look, this big gig we've got in surface next week. I was thinking we could go through Harrisville and check out where it all happened. Well, I wouldn't mind showing you the farm just to prove to you it does exist. Are we still going out to supper tonight? Sure. It's interesting about those two knowing each other in prison camp. Anyway, we'll worry about that tomorrow. Tonight? It's wine, woman, and song. Yes, and I know he'll be supplying the wine and the woman. <laughs> The lock's rusted. The place seems deserted. I told you it was. Just as I saw it in my dream, hallucination, time up, or whatever you want to call it. It seems different somehow. 
But it's the same place. Anyone there? Anyone home? My hat. That's my hat! See? My hat. Well, show me where it all happened. my container. Barry, I don't like this place. Let's go. Where did the murder take place? Over there by those trees. Okay. Let's take a look. No way. I'm not going down there. I'll wait in the shade. You'll find St John's a little further up the road. Thanks for your help, Sergeant. Any time, Miss Grenville. Any time. Well, his name is Benson, and it seems he's the owner of the farm. Well, he's let the place go to rack and ruin. Mm. He obviously enjoys the booze more. <laughs> the interesting thing about Sergeant Hawke is that Who's he's... Who's Sergeant Hawke? I thought I told you about him. No. Oh, anyway, the point is he's been dead for 12 years. He died in 1972 on the 29th of February, the same date as Slater. Yeah, but that was 1944. How did he die? They think he drowned. What do you mean, they think he drowned? Well, he was on a flood rescue mission. They found his boat upside down. But that was several days before they found his body. So he drowned? Well, that's the reason for the open verdict. They found no water in his lungs and he had extensive head work. Head wounds. Mm. Gee, it gets more interesting by the minute. Well, I wouldn't mind finding out more while we're here. The sergeant told me that the vicar of St John's Church down the road claims to be an authority on local history. And the graveyard is very interesting. Graveyard? Most of the hatches were buried there. Mm. Don't be stupid. We're not going down there at midnight with a hammer and wooden stake. Besides, 
to be fascinating. The graveyard's one of the oldest in Australia. Oh, great. All we need now is a full moon. Uh. inquiring about Arthur Hatcher. That's right. Christ, how did he know that? Actually, the sergeant phoned to say that I might expect a visit from two young people. Mr. Norden, Barry Norden. This is Jackie Grenville. How do you do? My name's Aldershot. We're doing some research into the Hatcher case as part of our studies. And what are you reading, Mr. Norden? Law. Are you studying law too, Miss Grenville? Yes. Well, how can I help you? Do you know much about the Hatchers, Mr. Aldershot? Well, most of them are buried in the crypt of the old chapel on the Hatcher property. Arthur was the last to be buried there. Would you like to see the vault? It's quite famous for its convict masonry work. We'd like that very much, if it's not too much trouble. No trouble at all. Look, it's only a little while before even song. I'll drive you there. There's quite a story about it, you know. When I first came to Harrisville, then I... When the John Hatcher settled in the area, he built the chapel before he completed the farmhouse. It was a custom in those days. We have a bit of trouble with cows. Occasionally, I hold a memorial service for some of the older families in the district who have their family plots here. Our caretaker, Mr. Morris, tries to keep the cemetery as neat as he can, but, uh, well, we're not a very wealthy parish. And we have to rely on the kind generosity of the faithful to keep the place in order. If you look across the hill there, you can see where the Hatchers lived. Now, the new owner doesn't work the property. He uses it as a country retreat. Actually, he's a bit of a spiritualist. Well, nice enough fellow in his own way. This property was part of the original land, and they donated it to the church early last century. Look, here's a Hatcher. Jane Mary Hatcher, died 1867, aged 11. Thomas Joseph Hatcher, drowned in the Great Flood of 1872. Rest well, my son, with only clay for a pillow. R.I.P. Yuck. Those Victorians were a morbid lot. Hey, look, here's another one, too. John Adam Hatcher, died 1851. No, all of these are too early. Well, people were buried in the graveyard until the crypt was completed. I like to think of them as being closer to God. Actually, our worst problem these days is vandalism. Some people have no respect for religion or history. Careful as you go. Oh. Here we are. Here lie the remains of the main hatcher line. Beautiful, aren't they? Absolutely superb workmanship. Where's Arthur's? Oh, through here. Mind your head. Poor old Arthur. Only got his name on it. No date, epitaph, nothing. Almost no burial. How come? No money. He was the end of the line. My Virgil and I were the only ones at the funeral. Arthur would have had a pauper's burial without this vault. Actually, if it hadn't been for the local stonemason, there wouldn't even be a name on it. He did it as a favour to me. Hmm. When did he die? Oh, let me see. It was 1968, I think. Oh, yes, 29th of February. Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. So cool. Feel that. You do realise that these are doors, I suppose. Really? How interesting. Pretty firm. By design. Imagine that this was the inside of the tomb. Now there's a bronze pin about here, which holds back a bronze bar resting on two ledges. While the pin is in this position, you can open the door at will. But once you remove the pin, the bar drops down and the door is locked forever. Why was it done? Grave robbers. They were very bad in the early colonial days. The pin was given to the next of kin after the funeral to reassure them that no one could break into the vault. There is one way it could be opened. How's that? 
from the inside. Oh, well, that's hardly likely. Who's got Arthur's pin? I have. There was no next of kin to give it to. The Hatches must have been in this district for some considerable time. Oh yes, they were the first to buy land in the valley. The Hatches were a strange lot. Have you heard about the Hatcher ghost? No. No, oh, we haven't. Yes, it's quite a legend in these parts. They say it's John Hatcher. He and his manservant were drowned in the first flood ever recorded here. When they found the manservant's body, its head was missing. It was never explained, and nor did they ever find Hatcher's body. Ah, but his soul goes marching on. Well, for more than a century, it would seem. There have been many sightings reported. Vicar, do you believe in ghosts? Well, it depends what you mean by ghosts. I do believe that there have been times when unhappy souls have tried to contact us. And who knows? God moves in mysterious ways. So how did Arthur die? Oh, dear me, poor Arthur. Well, I didn't know him very well. He was committed before I was transferred to this parish in 1952. I did visit him a few times in the institution. He was quite deranged. I like to think of it as an accident. He broke his neck when he fell from the second floor of the asylum. Not a very nice death for an innocent man. No. No, I suppose not. Uh, do be careful of the fence. I must get Mr. Morris to mend it. Thank you, Vicar. You've been very helpful. It's been a pleasure to find young people so interested in our past. Hello, Mr. Aldershot. Good afternoon, Miss Morton. These young people have been visiting the old church. They're very interested in our history. Oh, then you must visit my museum. We'd love to, but some other time. Yes. Well, nice to have met you. Thanks very much. Bye. Goodbye. I don't like it. Those dates, they all can't be a coincidence. Slater died 29th of February, 1944. Arthur Hatcher died 29th of February, 1968. Sergeant Hawke died 29th of February, 1972. All leap years. There's something else you won't like. Arthur's tomb isn't even sealed. I pulled the edge of the marble slab and the door opened about an inch. Now I've got to go back and see what's in it. You can't do that. You just can't break into a crypt, force open a tomb and think you'll get away with it? You can count me out. The vicar's really freaked you out, hasn't he? Look, that ghost story was probably put about by the hatches trying to keep people off their property. Look, you just don't do it. It's like, it's like reading someone's private diary. You just don't do it. Oh, don't be bloody silly. They're all dead anyway. Look, if you want to pull out of this now, that's cool. But me, I'm going through with it. Well, I'm booking in for the night. Do I get a single or a double?
I can explain this. All right, Zane. Explain. It better be good, or the Reverend will have you hung. Missing a boat with his vault. Well, the Reverend knows who I am. He'll tell you. I've called the police. You can explain to them. Shit, not the police. Christ Almighty. How dared you blaspheme in the house of the Lord? Yeah, thanks, mate. Well, how was I supposed to know there'd be a caretaker who saw the headlights? You're lucky the Reverend isn't pressing charges against you. I can see the headlines. Law student defends himself in court. The Perry Mason of Harrisville. The cat burglar crept into the crypt. Crab Look, Jackie, <laughs> half the day is gone already. I've got to have a shower. You're the one wasting all the time, snooping around people's graves, getting yourself locked up all night. Yeah? It wasn't a complete waste of time. I did find something. What? Well, I think it was that tomb pin that Vicky was talking about. So? Well, I don't know. I really don't know. It's just another crazy part of this jigsaw puzzle. Well, come with me. I want to show you something I found while waiting for you this morning. Look, Jackie, give me a break, will you? Let me get my act together. I've got to have something to eat. I've never known the summer to be so dry, Miss Morton. Oh, have faith, Mr. Kennedy, have faith. It has to rain sometime. How lovely to see you again, Miss Grenville. And you must be Mr. Norton, mm -hmm. of course. There's so many interesting things here, I thought I'd bring Barry back and show him. Oh, lovely. Enjoy. Have a look round. Fine. Thank you. At least it's nice and cool. Look. Frenchman's farm. Built in 1822 by John Hatcher. The homestead of the River Flats estate was flooded to the eaves in the great floods of 1850 and 1872. Jesus, they must have been some floods. It's got to be 20 feet to the eaves of that house. Mm. The homestead was destroyed by fire in 1892 and was rebuilt. It looks different somehow. There's that weird smell again. It smells like... It's like lavender. All little old ladies. It smells like death. I smelt it back at the crypt. And it's here now. Good morning, Miss Grenville. Mr Norton. Vicar, look, I'm sorry about last night. It was late when I decided to take another look and... Well, being Sunday, I thought you'd have another service. Oh, that's all right. Mr. Morris tries very hard to look after his trust. A little too zealous, maybe. I do hope you weren't inconvenienced. Not at all. Oh, we were just looking at the old engraving of Frenchman's Farm. Oh, that's the Hatcher home, built by John Hatcher. Actually, his name wasn't Hatcher. It was Houchet. He was a Frenchman. And from what I can discover from the folklore, he was an officer in the army of Napoleon. 
He fought in several major battles until he was very badly wounded in the leg. Then in 1821, a Frenchman arrived in Harrisville looking for land and settled for River Flats. Best land in the district. Actually, I was writing a short history of the district a few years ago. I came across the bill of sale. It might have made an interesting illustration. Here it is. For the land known as River Flats, sold this day, 2nd of June, 1821, to Mr. Jean-Pierre Houchet for the sum of 160 pounds, 10 shillings, and paid the equivalent in gold francs. You see, this is the last record of the name Houchet. From this date on, all records refer to John Hatcher. This is great stuff. Well, Jack, we better be going. Thank you. Sorry to have troubled you. It was no trouble at all. Anyone who cares about our history, our past, makes me very happy. It's my second love, next to the Lord. Well, we'll see you in church sometime. Miss Morden? Thank you. Bye. There's something about that man I don't like. You know, I wonder what Slater was digging for. There has to be something valuable buried on that farm. There has to be. Let's go and check out Mr. Benson. subject to flooding. They've moved the house. That's it. Yeah. That's why Slater was digging in the middle of that paddy. He was looking for the side of the old farmhouse. And by the size of that farmhouse, they must have had a cellar. And a big one at that. Suppose it did have. I don't see. Well, Slater never got a chance to dig too deep before Arthur hit him with the matty. Arthur didn't hit him. It was the other man. Oh, whoever. I'll bet that Slater was looking for the cellar of the old farmhouse. And more important, what was in it? Well, maybe Benson will be able to show us where it is. Those river flats must have had a few floods over them since then. Must be three or four feet of soil covering those foundations. God, I wonder how he knew where to look. The prison camp. Hatcher's brother might have told him when he was dying. It could have been delirious. Who knows? That's it. Joe Hatcher and Slater were in the same prison camp. Reports that the cattle prices will stay depressed because of the drought. And that's the news for Monday, 27th of February, 1984. And now back to music. <laughs> All right, swag. I can see. What's your trouble? No trouble. How are you today, Mr. Benson? I'm fine. Barry Norton. This is Jackie Grenville. Harry Benson. Yeah, we kind of met yesterday. We were wondering if we could check out your property. Why, do you want to buy the place? No, nah, nothing like that. Uh, it's a long story. Which one? The ghost or the murder? Well, neither really, but it is connected. Well, it's that bloody parson. Spreading those stories. You want a drink? Yeah, I'd love one. Go sit down and get some glasses. Sober enough today. Take care of that, will you? Bill. Yeah. Remember that name that stuffed up the computer on Friday? Grenville. And my boyfriend's been arrested. I got this report from Harrisville an hour ago. Breaking and entering. When? 
Sunday night. He broke into a church. What was he going to do? Steal the poor box? No. Doesn't say. Was the girl arrested? No. Mr. William Morris, the caretaker of St. John's Church, Harrisville, arrested a suspected burglar, Mr. Barry Norden, at 10 p.m. on Sunday, February 26, in the crypt of the old parish church. After being taken to the Harrisville police station, the suspect was held overnight. Norden claims he was gathering information for research. Research? Well, they're law students. Norden was released 11 a.m. Monday with a warning. The vicar of St. John's, Reverend Aldershot, decided not to press charges. Aldershot. It was the first name that came out on our computer reader. I went down to the computer room when this report came in. It's wiped all the tapes. All that French stuff's gone. The reference gives nothing. Aldershot, the numbers, nothing. Well, it's lucky we kept that lot on Friday, isn't it? Yeah, it seems they're still in the area. Bring Harrisville. Check on Aldershot. I'm sorry about my reaction to you two. I, uh... I get these lapses of memory. Living on my own, you know. You said bloody parson would leave me alone. It's always fossicking round. Sends all sorts of oddballs out here with these stories about Hatcher's ghosts. I hope you don't think we're oddballs. What? No, 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 not at all. One story goes that Hatcher caught one of his, his convict workmen stealing. The poor bastard attacked him with a pick or something. Had him executed. Yeah. yeah. I didn't stuff about in those days. Huh? Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no, no. The story goes that Hatcher was entrusted with a pile of Napoleon's gold. And the Frenchman's ghost still protects the bloody treasure. Hatcher was supposed to be wealthy. That could account for it. You know, you surprised me. I must admit, I never knew that there'd ever been another farmhouse on this property. But one thing I do know is the spot where Slater copped it. Around here somewhere. Do you get many people wanting to see the spot? No, no. Not so much lately. Uh, there's an old tramp. He's camped over there somewhere. They often see him hobbling about among the trees right about dusk. Poor old Barson. <laughs> he doesn't do any harm. Well, here we are. Great spot. Never believe a murder could take place here. I would. Well, the earth seems pretty settled. Well, that's not surprising. It one hell of a flood through here about seven or eight years ago. That'd be the one when Sergeant Hawke was drowned. Well, you really have done your homework, young lady. Did you know they found his body not far from here? A bit further down the river. Ah, oh, this place really gets it when it floods. Water as far as the eye can see. Well, it's natural catchment area, you see. Mr. Benson, would you have any objections to me doing a bit of digging around this spot? See if I can find the foundations to the old house? Well, why not? Long as you clean up the mess after you're finished. You two kids really do believe there's something worth finding around here, don't you? Mm, there has to be. Christ knows what it is, but it was worth killing someone to keep it there. Tell you what I'll do. I'll lend you the digging gear. And if you do find something, well, maybe we can split it. Hmm? Uh, when do you propose to do all this digging? Well, tomorrow. It's a bit late to start now. I'm sure Mr. Benson wouldn't mind us sleeping in his barn for the night. Uh, Mr. Benson mightn't, but I might. Well, you two kids can take care of your own sleeping arrangements. The barn's yours if you want it. morning in the bowl of night has flung the stone that puts the stars to fight. 
Come on, it's time to get up. Oh. Come on, Barry. Benson's arranged breakfast for us. I'll give you two minutes to get up and wash, otherwise I'll be eating your share. Well, you should be able to get about four hours in before lunch. Come on, Jack. Let's go. I'm sure Mr. Benson thinks you're as mad as I do. You'll see. Oh, Swag. Let's have a drink. to tell. Oh, it'll be somewhere around here. Are you sure? Sure. I was here 40 years ago. Very funny. I'll break the surface. You can start shoveling. Oh, Bill. I have a confession to make. Oh? Since when did you start breaking the law? Last Friday. I took it on my own back to take that printout to my French tutor at uni for a translation. Well, she's done it for me. She just phoned us out ready. Ah, well, next year I can retire in confidence. Now you're a real cop playing hunches instead of all that computerized bullshit. Changed your mind. Barry. Barry. Where are you? Barry? <laughs> Don't you ever do that to me again! Ah! 
better than a study. Thérèse avait vraiment des problèmes. Hein? Alors, oh, on se réparera plus tard. Hein? Il y a quelqu'un. A tout à l'heure. Excusez-moi. Madame Chevreau. Bonjour, monsieur. Detective Sergeant Dolan. How do you do, madame? Uh, Chevreau. Chevreau, thank you for sparing your time. Very hot outside. J'aime la chaleur. Yes, it's a sizzler. Ah. I do hope that you don't think that we're using your office as a translating service. It's just that the French Republic was mentioned in the document, and I just hope that it wasn't anything political. Where did you acquire this document? It was on our computer last Friday. Odd. It has nothing to do with the Fifth Republic. This is from an entirely different era, the First Republic. You say this document is on your computer? Oh, it was. Unfortunately, the tapes have been wiped. That's the only copy we have. Monsieur Dolan, this order is very old. Very old indeed. Order? An official order written, we would say, oh, about 200 years ago. 200 years? Well, how did it get onto our computer? Do you realize what that is? Uh, to me, it looks like a history lesson. You could say that. It's an order for an execution. Generally, it says, by order of the Grand Revolutionary Council, on a certain date, an execution, that is, mort par décapitation, will be carried out for the crime of robbing, defrauding the military, the army, or... Uh, it is very difficult. The French language has changed in many ways since this was written. But how did it get on to our computer? Oh, a joke, perhaps. April Fool's Day is coming up. I found one of the execution orders, signed by a General Ishe. So I looked him up in our military records. It was not a name I recalled from my school days. He was a soldier of the revolution who rose to the rank of General. Later, he became Inspector General under the Emperor Napoleon. The Emperor made him Paymaster General uh, after he was uh, ça se dit, incapacitated with a severe leg wound. He was responsible for sending many people to Madame la Guillotine. He retired a, a wealthy man and then disappeared. Edmund Barry Norden. What's your problem? You are. You must be stupid to go treasure hunting at your age. And I must be even more so to be here. Well, you were the one who started it. Where are you going? Home. And don't try and stop me. I'm sick of the heat, I'm sick of drunks, and I'm sick of you. Unbelievable. Women. Bloody women. I've just been speaking with the sergeant at Harrisville. Those kids reckon that Slater was killed with a Mac and that the wrong guy was charged. Who do they think they are? Starsky and Hutch? How can students solve a crime that's beaten me for years? Smart ass. I've been over at the law school and checked on them. They reckon Norden's pretty smart. And if he doesn't make it, he has a promising future in the recording business. Well, it's just as well, Mattox, huh? Even we didn't know what killed them. Even the post-mortem said it might have been something like 
I imagine. Maybe they came across the case during their studies. Uh, Scott may be. What about the girl? Have you got anything on her? Yeah, Jackie Grenville. She's from one of the oldest grazing families in the country and has the greatest potential of all the current law students. So what? Nothing. Except for Norton's running with the Church of England, they're both as clean as a whistle. An older child wouldn't press charges. Oh, you spoke with him? No. He's a bit like a virgin. You know they're around, but you just can't find them. Forty-year-old murder, a church break-in. There has to be some connection. I wish I knew what those two buggers were doing now. What could be inside? Oh, I don't know. Where's a bloody tongue? <sighs> Give me a go. Hang on, hang on. Fortune. Damn, I knew there was something. I've seen a coin like this before. Looks like a sovereign. I've never seen so much gold. Austerlitz. Napoleon. The vicar said he was in the Napoleon War. To who with Napoleon or Julius Caesar, it's ours now. We're rich. All right, kids. Now let's have a drink and celebrate and we'll count the loot. Now, we'll keep this in the house tonight, right? And we'll take it to the bank tomorrow and Swaggy can keep that over it. <laughs> <laughs> storm out there. Yeah, well, listen, I don't want you two kids to stay out in the barn tonight in this storm. I'm going to make up the spare room for you. I've poured you a drink. Help yourself. No, with all this cash, the bank could record the greatest, do I? We'd be sure to get a deal, eh? What about your studies? Well, every musician should have a good legal brain behind him. This time of the year. Now hang on. We'll go and get a lamp. Now just relax. Oh, don't forget, put your net down. Mosquitoes will carry you away. Night night. Sweet dreams. Lavender. 
here again when I opened the box. So? What about the ghost? Gee, I'm glad we're not sleeping in the barn tonight. I said, what about the ghost? Yeah, I heard what you said. Ghost? There are no such things as ghosts. Well, what if the treasure chest was given to Hatcher to take care of and his ghost guards over it? Get that bloody parson and his crazy ideas. I knew there was something there, and I found it. I've worked like a dog all day. So put out the light and let's get some sleep. So musty. Sorry about that. Can't stand the smell of that lavender perfume. Bloody old. Anyway, get back into bed.
This case has got me stumped. You know, these files go back to 1944 and even before that. It's hard to know what's fact and what's fiction. How do you mean? Take this report, for instance. In one place it says February. And over here, the same incident is supposed to have happened in March. Oh, you know what those hillbilly communities are like? Day here or there doesn't make any difference. That's not all. Over the years, there have been several murders that are still unexplained. And they all have two things in common. All have had head wounds of one kind or another. And in each case, no weapon has been found. What have they got to do with this case? Mm, I don't know. Except they're all unexplained. Jackie? Morris, what's the matter? You look as if you've just seen a ghost. Oh, something terrible has happened. What do you mean? The crypt. It's terrible. Jackie! Jackie! At first I thought the damage might have been caused by last night's storm. Do you think it could have been that young student who broke in the other night? Oh, no, Miss Morris, I don't think so. I don't think so, no. How could anyone do such a thing? They're just vandals. Just look at how the marbles been ripped off the hatch or two. Have they done any damage inside? No, Mr. Morris, the coffin appears to be intact. Look at the bars over the window. Well, that's how they must have got in. Got out. God help us. Come on, Wiggy Wiggy. The day's half gone. Come on, Swag. Friday we had some action when we started with that student's name. Let's start there. All right. Grenville. Gren, I double L E? Yeah. Mm. What was that number again? 292-1984. That's it. It's not a damn phone number, it's a bloody date. The 29th of the second month of 1984. Of course, it's an execution to be carried out on the 29th of February. That's today. I need a chopper in a hurry. John Mainsbridge. Homicide. Hey, don't forget your file. Give them to Bill. Better still see what comes up with the rest of the information now you know it's a date. Okay. Starting where? VKR calling Bravo, November X-ray. Bravo, November X-ray. VKR, Detective Mainsbridge, over. John, where are you? I'm passing a traffic jam near Ipswich. Just hope I can get to Harrisville before anything happens. Over. It's too late. It has happened. Norton was murdered. The farm. Over. When? Over. Oh, last night, early this morning, he was filled by uh, an axe. Something. Anyway, he's decapitated. He's a hell of a mess. Over. What about the girl? Over. She's alive. 
and taking her to Harrisville for questioning along with a prime suspect. A guy named Benson. Over. What do you want me to do? Over. Stay with the girl for a statement. I'm waiting on your chopper to return all the rest to our rescue duty. Okay. I'll uh, meet you at the Harrisville okay. station. Over. Roger. Out. Poor Mr. Norton. They were such a happy pair. Who could have done such a terrible thing? We have our suspicions, Mr. Aldershot. What kind of person would do this kind of thing? No respect. It's disgraceful. Vandals, they did it. Dreadful. Tell me, why didn't you press charges against Mr. Norton? Oh, he didn't do any of this. This is different. This happened last night. I'm sure you have more important things to concern you than my problem. Uh, the young man was researching an old trial, a murder that occurred in 1944. The accused is buried in this vault. Vandals. <laughs> Think they'll find the treasure. Mr. Morris, please. Treasure? I believe that Mr. Norden had an old gold French coin in his hand. Hmm. Obviously coincidence. Well, for the life of me, I cannot understand why your name turned up on our computer. I, I have no idea. I'm only the custodian of these vaults. Mr. Aldershot, I believe that you have special interest in local history. Is there a treasure? Mr. Benson claims that he's seen it. Mr. Benson probably spreads those stories to get people to his property. Uh, ghosts, no less. Makes a very good tourist attraction. Vicar! Can I have the bolt so I can close the tomb slab again? The bolt? Uh, I've misplaced it, Mr. Morris. I'll have another look when I get back to St. John's. Will that be all, Sergeant? That seems all for the moment, sir. Thank you. Good night. Thank you, Sergeant. No problem. What a day. I don't think we'll have much trouble nailing Benson. Hmm. I just wonder why he did it. No motive. <laughs> Benson did it all right. All this talk about a box of gold in the cellar. There never was any gold. My men have been over every inch of that farm. They found nothing. There's no gold. Hmm. I'm surprised that they haven't found the uh, murder weapon yet. Well, it's only a matter of time. Mm. Did they say when we could get a statement from the girl? No. She went to hospital early this afternoon. And she's gone right round the bend. Shock, I suppose. The doctors say she may never recover from the experience. So much for her future. By the way, we found this, not far from the body. It's an odd-looking thing. It hadn't been there long because it's not weathered. Mm -hmm. What is it? I don't know. Some kind of key, I'd say. Those kids might be onto something. What do you mean? In the Hatchet case, they said Arthur was not the killer. Yeah? What are you getting at? It doesn't add up. Arthur Hatcher had no motive for murder. And nor did Benson. I'm going to the crypt.
the computer, they warned me this could happen. But I was too late. Why, Bill? I can't understand it. The Reverend thinks the vandals came back. Where is the vicar? He's over at Frenchman's farm. He said something about going over to take care of Benson's dog. Mr. Olashot's name has appeared in this case before. It's got to be some connection. Didn't you know he was a friend of Joe Hatcher's? Mr. Oldershot was the chaplain at that German prison camp, and he was there when Joe Hatcher died. Thank you, Mr. Morris. It's all right now. You can rest in peace. Our secret is safe. Vika, do you believe in ghosts? I do believe that there have been times when unhappy souls have tried to contact us. And who knows? God moves in mysterious ways.